Town might have burnt down, so it seems fitting that we burn all the shit they gave us down too. Yeah. Yeah. Scholarship, be sure to mail or drop off your application by the end of this week. Prom is coming. Mark your calendars for Saturday, May 18th at Manzanita Place. This year's theme is a walk through paradise. Have a great day, Bobcats, and rise up! Coming through, old person, coming through. What's up, 14? Did I give you guys your calendars? No. no. Yeah, right. Bro. Here we go. The fire was six months ago. Today. Mm -hmm. yep. That means we've been going to this terrible place for six months. No. No, we started. No, we, we started to start till January. Four months. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Time, time's going by so fast. Oh, yeah. There's a part of me that envies my friends that picked up and moved out of the area. They picked up, they left, they don't think about it, they don't talk about it. Here. It's like all like those school shootings you never hear about. Like and they happen all the time. And then like it's like our town burnt down and then hardly anybody knows or cares. People come and they wanna ask us questions and film us or make sure we're okay, but you can't really understand what we went through unless you, like, were escaping that day. Everything that you thought your senior year was going to be has totally just been flipped upside down. Never once would I have thought that I would be in an airport building my senior year and have everything taken away from me. I was expecting for a rough senior year, but it's, it's rough in a different way. I never realized how much I loved being in a small town like Paradise until now. You feel at home and like it sucks because I haven't felt at home for so long. And when you do go there, it's like, I wish we could just stay here and I wish it was back to normal. It's weird because being in paradise makes me feel like more relaxed, even though it looks like this. There's my old dentist office. Oh, there's Aisha. I like your septum. Oh the only decision that I need to make is if I want to leave or stay close. One, two, three. <laughs> Why not go explore if you don't even have somewhere to call your home? This is the last piece of my prior life to the fire. Yep, this is my fabulous room. 
which I love. These are all the pictures of, over the years, all the students I've had. I've had brothers and sisters and cousins and even children of previous students. I really want to get back into my classroom and teach there again. That's the agenda. I haven't taken it off. That's what we were going to be doing that day. It's like my room is frozen in time. Now, my life is defined as before the fire and after the fire. So this is all that's left of before the fire for me. All right, let's see if I can squeeze in here. Welcome to my home. This was my truck. I would have been able to drive this to high school, but I didn't have my license before the fire, and I was never able to drive it. Really sad. I hope I can fix it up in 20 years. Who knows? It's weird. Just the little things you find, man. Here's my pocket knife my grandpa gave me when I was four. Not much left of it. <sighs> I just wish I could have saved something else. <clears throat> I told my parents even after this fire that I didn't want them to sell the lot. I want to keep it. And eventually, whether I build another house up here or I put a garage up here, do, do something, this place will stay in my name somehow. Like, when camera crews walk up to me, like, a couple, like um, the first couple weeks after the fire, it was interviews and interviews and you know that's what made me upset is because like I know my stuff was gone and I didn't want to talk about it. I actually lost everything like I actually only have my phone from the fire and what I was wearing like that's it. My grandfather and his family fled from Germany from from the Holocaust and all the memorabilia, all the material possessions that came with them, you know, passports with red J stamped on them, prayer shawls, letters, all of that is just lost. I've come to the conclusion that nothing is permanent. And you know, that's something I have to accept. And if I accept it now, it'll be less devastating later. And you know, my town, I loved it, but it's gone. I actually saved all my makeup. <laughs> Cause like, it's so expensive. I know that sounds really bad, but I made sure to grab my baby blanket since I've had since I was born. I made sure to grab any pictures that we had at my house. My mom grabbed my homecoming queen crown instead of her medication. So that shows you what she cares about. <laughs> and so unorganized. Gonna... Oh my gosh, you look so skinny. <laughs> look at this point of view. The housing in San Francisco says it's getting full and I want to like just get it over with. How do you do that? What do it? What's your next step? Well, I'd have to just do it. Just say, okay, I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mom's a really awesome person, and I love her a lot. But I have to think that it's my life, and I should make the decision of where I want to go. But it also is like two sides fighting within myself, because I do care about her more than anything, and I don't want to make her sad.
Man, we should try to get up there. Through that hole up there. That one. Why not? Because who knows where I'm going to pop back out at. <laughs> You'll probably end up in this chute. And then I'll have to get shot out of that. I won't even fit through that, dude. My head won't. I'll give you a boost the best I can. Right? My grandma had our favorite little thing in the front yard. It was, uh, I am lost. If I am found before I return, please tell me to wait for myself. And I, I always read that and stood there like, what does that actually mean? Are you gonna tell me how the sunset is up there? It's beautiful. I had a job when I was 15 and a job ever since. And since the fire, I've been unemployed. I'm kind of lost, trying to get back on my feet. Okay, so ladies, I need you all to weigh in on my retirement. <laughs> Your retirement? I went up Sunday to my classroom, and driving up there, I got a moment where I felt like I was in the fire again. I literally saw, like, flames by the side of the road in my mind, you know? And I had that terror again. And, um, and then I just felt sad, just sad, because I look around and it's not what I remember. I'm tired. The fire kind of burned a lot out of me. Sometimes teaching, you feel like you start the fall semester, you feel like you're serving a term yeah. in prison. It's so regulated. I haven't had a weekend off except in the summers, and then I'm taking classes every summer. I just, I just sort of let it go and think, well, whatever happens will happen, and I will be, I'll be OK, and I have been. So what Thoreau said when he left Walden Pond, I left the woods for as good a reason as I went there. I had more lives to live, and I had spent enough time on that one. That's my quote. That's it. That's it. Yep. I have more lives to live. I turned into a really angry person after the fire and I didn't know that I would turn out that way and I took it out on the people that were closest to me. It's kind of like ups and downs right now. It's like today's one of my ups, but like I don't know tomorrow if I'm going to be down or not. Just like how I wake up. It's weird. I cry a lot behind closed doors. Um, my parents, I don't like crying in front of my parents. I don't know. I feel like we haven't really had a chance to talk about it and like Every time I do, I cry. And I don't want to cry anymore because I'm, I'm so over crying about it. But it was like a traumatic thing that we weren't expecting or prepared for. God, it seemed like you guys were just going to your junior prom. <laughs> I'm getting sad. <laughs> Do I look skinny? Yeah, you look skinny. You, um, you don't look skinny, you look you look lean and beautiful. Sweet. Oh my Bye. gosh, you look very handsome. So yeah, the girls were like halfway ready. <laughs> Before the fire, I had a stepdad and he started being mean to me to get to her. And I feel like the cops never did anything to help. We had to leave, and we were homeless for a little bit. Yeah. And she worked so hard to find the house that we were renting at the time. And that's when the fire happened, and she was just really devastated. She's just so strong for everything she's been through. I just want her to be happy.
my focus was my daughter for such a long time. Being able to like have a place for kids to be at and be themselves and it feels like it's my purpose. And now I'll be lonely. I won't have them around. I won't be able to share things with them, you know? I think that's the scariest thing. My family ended up better off than I would have thought. We lived in a double wide trailer up in Megalia, and now we have an actual manufactured house. And I hate what happened to the town I lived in, but I love what happened to my family. Come on. Do you remember the fire? No, my grandpa just got trapped. Oh, did he? Where? Trapped um, over up in Conkel. He had like 18 people. Wow. And he was surrounded, but he got out alive. Thank goodness. Successfully. Play football? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I was there 16 years. How old are you? You said you were 11. Yeah, a little more than your whole life. Bye. Take care, bud. Thanks for playing. Yes, I would love the world to go on long enough for a kid of mine to be able to sustain a nice life and even pass on future generations. But until we find another planet to live on, if they screw this one, we're done for. All I know is that I'm going to help others somehow, some way. I'm just going to help people. And either if it's from other natural disasters or in the hospital as a doctor or a nurse or just as simple as a coach as a so of a softball team, I'm going to help people. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough because I've been trying to get a job and getting jobs are hard, especially when you're 18 because you don't have really anything to back it up. You got to, you know, just find a taco truck or something to work there. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it, I think. I'm, I want to experience life. Me and my friends, we all realized that this is our last year of high school and that we were finally going to be like, you know, gone and we were finally going to get away. But it's almost like we didn't want to leave. Like we wanted to stay in this one spot forever. by students, Miss Pertain. We have been through so much, so much. And as you know, I lost it all too. And I'm graduating with you two this year, so. I'm the class of 2019, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Nah. Run me through the particulars again, man. Um, why I got it? Yeah, yeah. Ah, for like 20 years, my dad had this truck, and uh, my dad had fixed the truck up. He swapped me driver's seat as I was like nine years old and let me drive, and uh, it burned in the fire. Well, now you got it. Piece of it forever. Joe, um, I'm officially going to San Francisco. Oh, you are? Nice. <laughs> no Congratulations. Way. Yeah, I signed, I did all this stuff for it last night. I actually, like, enrolled in stuff. When you go to Orange, do you have, like, a calendar yet? We need to sign up. It's not all. It's not all, baby. It's not all. It's definitely shocking and it's like terrible when we hear about another fire or something because when you go through that, it's not just after the fire's gone, it's over. Something needs to change. And I feel like that is probably our generation. The fire kind of made all of us have to grow up sooner than we'd like. This summer is gonna be the last time I can be a kid. Although I'm like scared to be an adult and on my own, I feel like I'm ready for it.